<laughs> this is what everybody's been waiting for, right? Nobody's buying two, three, fifteen hundred dollar graphics cards, right? The 5070 Ti. And this one's the one that's going to go head to head with whatever AMD's launching too. So, uh, you know, again, bated breath. Look at this, the Asus Prime. Now, it's important to understand that this GPU 5070 Ti, NVIDIA is relying on board partners to make their base model, but then there's also the overclock models and souped up models that are coming a bit later. And the performance disparity between the 5080 and some of the overclocked 5080s was pretty significant. It remains to be seen what's going to happen with the 5070 Ti because this is the only 5070 Ti that I have. 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 PCI Express 5.0. It comes with Velcro straps, a three pin to 12V2 power connector. So you get three of the eight pin connectors to the new modern one. And then of course the card itself. Wow, that's wild. The pre the PCB for this is actually larger than the 5080 and the 5090. It's a it's a sort of a traditional PCB. It's this long. It still has flow through cooling on one side, but it's not the double flow through design, the innovative Founders Edition design. But it's a pretty large PCB. But this is the one. This is the this is the card that for the performance, for the AI features, for the upscaling and DLSS4 frame generation hardware that gives you up to 4x frame generation with hardware frame pacing. Like that's kind of the big deal in terms of perception. But the big question on everybody's mind is, will gamers find those features as appealing or more appealing than traditional raster upgrade features? Only the gamers will decide. All right, that's enough of the unboxing. Let's actually benchmark. Jumping right into the gaming benchmarks, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. This is the news, this is the headline, this is the pre-cut. The NVIDIA RTX 40, 5090 frame gen, 450 FPS in Cyberpunk. We didn't move this fast on Crisis. Crisis didn't increase the frame rate. And look, look how good the 5070 Ti is doing. 4X frame gen, 289. It's just completely destroying the 4090 and the 4080 and the 4070 Ti. Uh, well, wait, wait a minute. There's a fly in the ointment there. It's doing 2X frame generation. Let's add 2x frame generation on the 5070 Ti. Oh, that doesn't look as good. This is what Jensen was getting at on stage when they were talking about gen on gen improvements. And that is basically the whole enchilada, except for AI and 5000 series features, which we'll talk about. That is a whole gaming enchilada for the 5070 Ti. Now, it's pretty good. It is actually pretty good. In gaming benchmarks, it's not quite as good as the artificial benchmarks. If we look at artificial benchmarks, we're looking at a 15% gen on gen uplift. That's actually pretty incredible. Good job. Does that translate into games? Uh, sometimes, but not always. And mostly, it's not as impressive. Basically, the 5070 Ti is a 4080, unless you're doing something that benefits significantly from the specific improvements to the 5000 series cards, AI related, some specific optimizations, etc., etc. Clouding the issue is the fact that NVIDIA simultaneously released a really amazing upscaling transformer model that is much better than the one in DLSS 3. DLSS 4 is the real deal, but uh, you can use those on 4000 series cards as well. Although I'm not sure if it works identically. Like is there hardware in the 5000 series that makes that run a little better on the 5000 series than the 4000 series? I was trying to quantify that for this video and I you know, went down a rabbit hole and at first it was like, oh yes, in these specific games, it seems like it's running a lot better. But I think that was just down to software optimizations. I don't think it was really any kind of like hardware benefit for that. Now frame gen, multi-frame gen, yes. You can, there's actually a hack to DLL. You can get it on a Chinese forum to enable that, but it turns into a stuttery, terrible mess when you try to run it on a 4090. So. Uh, there is something to that in terms of frame gen and frame pacing. 4X frame gen in games like, um, you know, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is amazing. And it's, it's pretty amazing in Cyberpunk too. I mean, playing playing Cyberpunk on an, on an, an OLED monitor with an absurd refresh rate, 240 hertz, is uh, a lot of fun. It is an absolute 
dream. If we look at Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty with ray tracing off on the Ultra preset at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, well, we, we get an idea of how the performance breaks down here. The performance looks really good at 1080p, but look at the performance difference between 1080p and 1440p. If 1440p can do 126 FPS, I would expect 1080p to be able to clear 200 FPS, but pretty consistently, that's not really gonna be a thing in 5000 series. And at 4K, considering that ray tracing is off and the ultra preset, 57 FPS, almost playable. You could play with the uh, graphic settings there. Maybe you could do frame gen, and yeah, frame gen, like on Cyberpunk. I like it, it's fine. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with the uh, ray tracing off at the highest preset, well, at 1080p, the performance of all these cards is very, very close. It's a pretty nice upgrade over the 4070 Ti, but there's really not a lot of difference between the 40, uh, 5070 Ti, the 5080, and the 5090 at 1080p, which is not incredibly surprising. 1440p, it's kind of the same story. I mean, at Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there's really not a huge difference between 280 and 301. The rasterization performance of these three cards is right in line. And even at 4K, 132, 143, 149, the raster performance in this older title, it's really not a lot different between these three cards. Now I mentioned those artificial benchmarks. Okay, yeah, the 5070 Ti Prime is almost as fast as a 4090 for these kinds of workloads. If we look at Firestrike, it's a little slower, but it's not dramatically slower than the 4090 Founders Edition. In Geekbench, if we look at the OpenCL benchmarks, well, I mean the 5090 on top, then the 4090, then the 5080, and then the 4080, and then the 5070 Ti Prime. But the performance between the 4080 and the 5070 Ti Prime, very, very close. Port Royal, it's a similar kind of a story, isn't it? The 5070 Ti Prime just edges ahead of the, the uh, RTX 4080. And that's the tough gaming 4080 as well, so it's not even the Founders Edition. For AI and text generation, yes, this card is no slouch. It is very, very similar performance. It's almost 5080, Founders Edition performance. Not quite, the, the Founders Edition is a little faster. 4400, 4616, it's a, it's a nice little grouping there. And that is a substantial upgrade over the 4080 and the 4070 Ti. Now what about content creation? I mean, this is a 16 gigabyte card after all. Well, it does hold its own in content creation. Strangely, it is markedly worse in the Puget Creator benchmark, but I think this will improve over time. The 4080 and the 4090 pull well ahead of the 4070 Ti for at least the Puget Bench standard benchmarks in the Creator Suite. It's not terrible, it's just slower than a 4080, which is, you know, the rare case that we see that. Across a whole host of games, when we're talking about just pure rasterization performance, from the 4070 Ti, we're talking about a 7 to 12% performance uplift generally. Some games really don't show a lot of performance improvements, especially if we're sticking down around that 1080p performance. There, there can be some substantial differences at 1440p and 4K. Now, don't forget DLSS 4. If you throw in DLSS 4 and 5000 series technologies, oh, the new neural compression, 16 gigabytes of VRAM is gonna go a little farther it's gonna perform a little better, like as if it has more VRAM, so Nvidia tells us. But I think that's something that we're gonna to have to explore ourselves in gaming and fun experimental times and like actually figure that out. At the end of the day, this is a 16 gigabyte card, which is nice, and it is $750. Well, at least the MSRP is supposed to be $750. The pricing really is the elephant in the room here, isn't it? So consider a 5070 Ti that is for all intents and purposes, functionally equivalent to a 4080, maybe slightly worse than a 4080. No one in their right mind would pay $1,000 for a 4080 when you can get a $750 5070 Ti. And this is kind of the problem. I know what you're thinking. The 5080 is also a $1,000 card, but you can't actually buy the 5080 for $1,000. And I think this really sort of telegraphs the weird dynamic of launch price versus actual price. The 5080 was never really intended to be available at $1,000 if there's some kerfuffle around the pricing of this particular card, which we know from Jay's Two Cents video, yes, there has been some kerfuffle around the pricing of this card. It was priced at $1,000, but this is supposed to be a launch card at $750. There's lots of other versions of this card that are gonna be available at a much higher price, and those reviews are coming later. The re reviews today are the cards that you can buy at $750 for at least a little while. Now I'm sure tariffs and everything else are coming and that's gonna completely wreck the pricing situation and blah, 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 and it might actually make sense to buy a 4080 at 
a somewhat discounted price if there are other options available but that actually cost more and that's really the danger here is like we can't price the 5070 ti at 750 dollars if we have unsold 4080s for a thousand dollars it doesn't matter that the 5080 is supposed to be a thousand dollars because that was never going to be a thing anyway but this at 750 dollars moving up to a thousand dollars you would never buy the 4080 even if these were an identical price or maybe the 4080 because it is slightly a little bit faster maybe it's like okay maybe i would buy the 4080 over the 5070 ti but at 750 dollars 5070 ti you're not going to buy a thousand dollar 4080 you might buy a thousand dollar 5080 if you were going to buy a thousand dollar card but a thousand dollar 4080 versus a thousand dollar 5080 everybody's going to go for the 58 every time it's just the 5080s unobtainium for at least a little while until you get the 4080 stock cleared out yeah pricing's rough pricing's really really rough I personally like the DLSS 4 features for non-competitive titles and uh, I'm planning some really insane stuff in terms of uh, measuring reflexes and latency and stuff. Check out the Open LDAT project. It's kind of a thing. It's neat. This has been a quick look at the Asus Prime 5070 Ti. It's got a great build, has a great cooling, it's very quiet. The temperatures of the card are in check, it doesn't use a lot of power. At $750 there is a lot to like about this card. At more than $750, things get a little sketchier. There's also competitive cards from AMD coming. We don't know what those are going to do yet. We'll see. It's an exciting time. Maybe, potentially, except for all this pricing kerfuffle. It's just madness. Just madness. <laughs> you owe a lot to Jay's two cents for doing the right thing. All right, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.